Yay, you found us. Welcome to Rock Painting Workshops. And today we are going to be creating this cute little flamingo. Uh, he's on about a 60 millimeter rock. And I'm trying to think in inches, that would be five and a half, would it? I don't know. I'm Australian. We work in centimeters. Uh, so seven centimeters. And what I'm doing here is I'm starting the rock by creating the background. Okay. And we want to put the least amount of layers on the rock because uh, there's a really good chance that it can peel off later when there's too many layers on your rock. So the one thing I like to do is I do like that colour in the background but not the overload of paint. So I'm just popping down the acrylic paint pen and you can do the same with acrylic paint putting down a thin layer and while it's wet I'm just getting my finger and I'm just smushing that out sideways and I just keep going around I don't need to go underneath the flamingo it just creates an unwanted layer of paint fill in the blank areas so basically the outsides are just really sort of washed out gives it a little bit of a, a watercolor look maybe but the thing is when you're choosing your colors, you want the darker color right in behind what you're painting, the subject, because that's where the shadow would be cast, okay? So you, you wouldn't do the light color around the flamingo and go out to a darker, darker color. So you can see here, I've just taken the deeper color in around the flamingo. This helps it give a little bit of dimension, causing the shadow in behind him and just glowing around the flamingo and then the lighter color I'll keep to the outside and you can just keep swapping out your pens until you get the exact coloring that you want I might look at that and then I just decide you know that that looks a bit too solid there for me put a bit more of the light color and sort of dab that around you can see now I'm just dabbing because I don't want to wipe the color away so I'm just sort of pushing it into a little bit of the darker just creating different points of interest until I feel like it sort of has a bit of a balanced look okay so we'll just move on to coloring in now the first color you can see I don't base coat my rocks the color of the rock that you're seeing this is it's called a salmon I've seen them online called salmon, salmon pink. We call them pinks in Australia. It's a really light colour. I'll just tell you what I'm doing. I'm just outlining the eyes. It's always easier to do the black outline first and we'll come back in colour, but you'll see that as I go along. Yeah, so in the tutorials, I like to use the light rocks. Just makes it easier for you to see what I'm doing. And there's no base coat so I'm putting the first coat of color on and I use acrylic paint pens the ones I'm using in tutorial are Posca but I also like Tuli Art and Artistro they're some of the acrylic uh, paint pens that I like and sometimes I'm using acrylic paint and I like the Americana series on rocks it just gives a really beautiful coverage on the rocks and you can see on this one sometimes the it's hard for the the light pink to pick up on camera so it's going to depend on your viewing platform to how much of the color you can see but with the first layer you know there are going to be some rocks where it just might absorb into the rock a little bit your rock might be a little bit porous and so some people put down you know three million base coats to stop that from happening but I'd like to communicate with you that that's actually a good thing when it happens you want that uh, first bit of paint to sort of soak in and have a relationship with the rock because a lot of the time when you put the base coats over it you're repelling the paint from the rock and it's really easy for it to completely peel off and I've got lots of examples of when that's happened so here I'm just putting down the thin layer uh, one even coat you can see I'm not doing it too thick there's no sense in trying to get the finished look right in the beginning. Okay, you just want to lay down that nice thin layer and let it dry. It only takes like a minute to dry as well. So just keep adding the color. Okay. I've 
gotten that little bit of background in between his legs there. So just added that in. And this is the new Posca colour that we have. I haven't seen it in the in America. We've got it in Australia. It's now available in UK. And yeah, this one's called Raspberry. So it's one of my new favourites. But I've just used three different colours of pink there. Keeping the darker shade underneath where the light wouldn't shine. So the pink would be darker in feathers underneath the body. And keep the lighter colours of flamingo on top. And this one I'm just going to do the yellow. It's the... Oh, I can't remember what it's called. Let me think a minute. The sunshine yellow. I knew it. It's one of the pastel colours of Posca. So it's not the regular yellow. This one is the pastel yellow. And I just like the shade of this one. Okay, come across, colour that in. And it's pretty boring watching another person colour, isn't it? Maybe not, I don't know. But it's giving you heaps of opportunity to do your own. So you can see at the beginning I, I started with my image on the rock and I've got lots of tutorials, video tutorials, photo tutorials and I've got my um, course as well that you can come along and do and I show you how to put the drawing onto the rock. So it's not a secret, it's out there. I just don't do every single video doing all the right from the drawing. So you can find that step on my other YouTube videos. They're also available in the course that we have um, shared with everybody and that's going to be available very soon. So it's the 5th of March now. So within the week, we'll have that out to you that you can jump on and learn all the new techniques as well. And that will be on our website for everyone to see. So now I'm just coming over because the paint's dry I'm just doing the second layer so you can see nice thin second layer and I've got a really good opaque coverage now and that's all it took you can see how solid that color is and that's what we're looking for so that while the first color you know might might look a little bit washy or might not look exactly right so many people they just keep coloring and coloring and coloring trying to get the great look on the first coat and all that does is actually start blocking up your pens so you just want to do a nice thin layer let it dry nice thin layer and it's not a lot of people saying oh but I don't like to wait and I don't like this it's like I don't wait you can see this is in real time you can see by the time I covered the whole rock in one layer it was dry, ready for the second layer. So this is what I do because I did my black outline first. You can see I'm using my white to fill in the spaces. But if the black line's too thick, I go back over. I can colour in and go over some of the black and thin that line out as well. Now we're going to do some shading. Okay, so what I've got is I showed you in the beginning we've got a glass of water I've dipped my paintbrush into that water you can see I'm, it's off screen sorry but I dip it in and I wipe the excess water off my brush so there's no drippy water on the brush and then I just tap it onto the top of my pen like that and put it down when there's too much paint or too much water I just wipe it on my microfiber cloth and you can see I just smoosh that around to give it some shading and I've done exactly the same thing so right in where the join is is where it's darker where the shadows are really you know where the light can't penetrate as much and I'm just smushing it around I, don't, I really don't have any rhyme or reason I just sort of put it into the areas where it would be. This is sort of like a bit of shadow would cast underneath the feathers as they come around. Just adds a little bit of interest to your rock but you can see I just pick up that colour off the tip of my pen 
if I dip it in the water to get it, you know, if it's a bit dry and I've got to get my pen, uh, my pen, my paintbrush a little bit damp, I'll dip it back in, but I always take off that um, solid drip of water on the end. So it just wants to be damp, it doesn't want to be soaking wet. This is just something you know that you can play around and practice with because if it's too, if the brush is too dry, it just won't move the paint at all. If it's too wet, it becomes you know a bit of a sloppy mess. I'm just give him some rosy cheeks. I keep calling him a him. It's him, he or she, who knows? Whatever. I know nothing about flamingos. I've never seen one. I have no idea what part of the world they live in, except I've seen some pictures with they walk across a beach. In Australia, we have emus. Okay, let's shade in that head a little bit. Yeah, so my flamingo knowledge is limited to cartoon pictures, colouring in books, or like I said, I've seen that um, where they walk across the beach. Okay, now I'm going to have to get, when I, as soon as I finish this, I'm going to have to go and Google where they actually live in the world. That'll annoy me now that I said I have no idea. Okay, let's put a little bit of orange blending in on his legs. And my friend loves it when I paint flamingo tutorials because she gets all the flam flamingo rocks. She collects them, so we put them around in her pot plants and around on the patio area. Look really cute. it for shading yeah. okay grabbing my uh, acrylic paint fine liner pen and my pet rock Bert everyone knows that I paint with Bert and he has lots of jobs and his job today is just to lean up the rock see how I'm just angling it up on Bert just so the rock is at a little bit of an angle and sometimes I like to lean on Bert. You can see that my hand is leaning on him so that my hand is raised higher than the rock. And that allows me to easily draw on my rock. So there's lots of things I use Bert for. I test all my pens on Bert so you can see he's very colorful. But I love using Bert to lean on. So you'll see him in heaps of videos and photos. Bert's been around for a year and a half now. He loves his job. Okay, so I'm just using all, going all around it in my fine line. I'm using the, oh, I always get the numbers mixed up, but this one's the Posca 1MR and it's a pin tip. So I like this one for outlines, but there's plenty of other ones that you can try and all the brands I like to use, they also have this size, which is the 0.7 mm size okay up we go all right let's get into his wing start defining out all the feathers so yeah really makes me think where what the Nash like hmm Sorry, I'm thinking out loud. I do that a lot when I'm videoing. Just trying to think like what country does the flamingo come from? Or is it like from heaps of countries, just not Australia? Okay, let's come around. Like I've said, I always be fascinated to see a flamingo. But I'm not sure, like, are they a little bit scary to see? Because I know in Australia we have the emu and they're really cute. And, you know, we think, oh, yeah, we want to see an emu. The first time I saw an emu was we were at a picnic one day and we had all the kids at the um, picnic table and we had all the food out. And these emus just came up and bombarded us and started taking all our food. So it just became, oh, I've just gone off the line a little bit there. Yeah, it became a trauma. <laughs> so I'm like, are flamingos the same? I don't know. So I'm just going to fix up this outline. I'm going to go up and do the outline that I wanted. And I've got to let that little bit of black paint dry. So the thing when I show you my videos, if I'm making a mistake, I'm just going to keep 
filming it, I need to show you how to fix it because mistakes are so perfect. That's the way that you are going to learn. Okay, just putting a little bit of darker color in there just helps with the shadow. I'm just going a little bit thicker and in the corners just adding a little bit more. So you can go around into any any joining areas I like to do this, just thicken up the black a little bit to create more shadow. Definitely in the feathers. Yep. A little bit of shadow where the wing would join across the body there. So yeah, you can fix any mistake with the with the pens because they are layerable. If, as long as they're dry, you can go back over them. And I just forgot to shade in his beak, but I want a little bit of orange. Sort of like we did on his leg. The orange on the yellow looks really good. But yeah, because they're layerable, as long as you wait for them to dry, you can stick another colour straight over the top, which is what we're going to do up on the top of his head, that black line to fix it. So I'm just filling in time and allowing that to dry. Okay, so let's turn that around. Okay, I'm just going to get the pink pen straight out and I'm just going to go straight over the top. And because it's dry, the colour will start layering up on the top there. Okay, there we go. Just soften that edge down a little bit, add a little bit of the pink back into it. Now if you do this too soon and the black paint was still wet and you tried to put the pink on top of it, obviously the two wet colours are going to start bleeding together. So then you're going to get a really muddy, muddy mess. But you can see how I left it to dry. Then I've popped some paint on top and it's just fixed up that line beautifully. But what I'm doing now is taking the darker colour and I'm just going right around close into the edges because that's where it will be the darkest. This is going to help us define it and sort of give us a little bit of separation. So it just doesn't look so flat on the rock, just helps it pop up a little bit. But that darker colour will be just around, it'll just be the shadow casting in behind him. Yeah, so what I'm going to do too is I will have some drawings available probably in the next week. So you've got the still photos of the flamingo so you can sketch him onto your rock. But here I'm just using my white paint pen and I'm just creating some highlights where the sunshine will come down and just little dots in his eyes, anywhere where the light's going to reflect. I'll just add some little dots and dashes in with my white pen. And make sure when you do the dots on the eyes that they're on the same side. So you can see um, both in the left and the right eye, I've, I've drawn that sparkle off to the left of each eye. Okay, that's about it. It's looking done. It's great. Okay, so there you have it. Come along and paint your flamingo and share them with us on our Facebook page, uh, Facebook group, sorry, and you'll find us at Reef Rocks Free Workshops and I look forward to seeing your flamingo.